Hey GPNZ crew, Sam here from giantpumpkins.co.nz, the website to help you grow a giant pumpkin here in New Zealand. Daylight savings is here, which means only one thing. It's almost time for the giant pumpkin growing season here in New Zealand. Super exciting, can't wait. Also means that everything else is growing as well. Before I get into what I have and haven't done so far, let's talk about the YouTube channel, which has currently surpassed 300 subscribers. <laughs> Well, to be exact, it's 305 as I film this. It's a very small number, but for a very small niche channel like this, it's pretty exciting to be honest, so thank you everybody that subscribed. Moving on from this, I don't know what the next milestone will be. 500 probably? The rate it's going? 500 sounds good. Now it's pumpkin talk time. We're at the end of September here, which means next month is pumpkin growing time in New Zealand. We're not going to have any pumpkins ready for October. Okay, so if you're watching this, we don't have pumpkins ready for Halloween. Other parts of the world will have amazing pumpkins right now, and they've got some great looking way offs, carvings, and all of that. They do it bigger and better than we do here. That's the truth. That's cool, but it's very exciting. October means it's almost giant pumpkin growing time. Or actually pumpkin growing time in general. Now this time of the year can mean different things to different people depending where they are on the giant pumpkin growers scale. A complete newbie to this hobby probably won't have anything ready. They may not have thought about seeds, they probably don't have a patch ready, they probably don't even know that it's time to start growing very very soon. If you know one of these people and they've shown some interest in the past, it is up to you, the person that's watching this, the person that may have already grown and knows what it's like, the excitement, the frustration, the joy, is that the right word? The joy of growing a giant pumpkin. You need to let the newbies know what they need to do right now. Okay? That's your job. Nothing worse than people not knowing when to grow a giant pumpkin and either not grow at all and go, oh damn it, I'll just have to wait till next year, or they try and grow out of season and they have a very poor result. Now if they have a poor result that might put them off, we want these newbies to have the best possible chance and experience that they can possibly have. And that's where you come in, the experienced grower. Even if you've grown once before, you're one year ahead of them, so help them out. Mid-tier growers, you should know what's going on. You should have an area set aside to grow a giant pumpkin in. You should have giant pumpkin seeds or be in the process of trying to get them. Um, you should also have some sort of watering set up and you know a little bit of what to expect during the growing season. You should also have something that you want to improve upon. Think back to your previous season or seasons and just focus on one area of improving. Now you may say, I want a bigger pumpkin, that's okay, everybody wants that, but you're gonna have to just focus possibly on one area to try and improve the result. Top tier growers, while they know everything, they're gonna have a huge area set aside, it's gonna probably be, uh, have soil tests already done, have amendments being done, and they're just chomping at the bit to get growing. Well, let's not worry about them too much. They're pretty much in their own little world. They're doing great things, and I can't wait to see what their results are. Oh, did I mention that over 300 people have subscribed to the YouTube channel now? <coughs> okay, Tiny Patch 2.0 update for you. It's the area that I grow in. It's the area up the back. It's very small, but I'm gonna try and see what I can do. I haven't done much to it, to be honest. Since the last video, um, I did put down the polythene. I did show that shot in the previous video, even though I was said I still had to do it. The crappy, crappy polythene from Bunnings, which has the same thickness as a $2 cheapo tablecloth that you'd probably use at a kid's birthday party. Well, that's what I used. I was very disappointed, so much so that I left a review on their website. It blew off only once, in the wind. I went outside, I was running around like an idiot, I was yelling at the polythene at just how crappy it was, and I managed to stake it down again, which is good. It seems to have stayed put, but it doesn't seem to be any match for some sort of wild animal, which I think was a cat, it's the neighbor's cat. It loves coming over and it loves pooping in the Tiny Patch 2.0. It also made some holes in this polythene, which wouldn't have been hard, it probably just sat on it. I might not be growing the biggest giant pumpkins around, but I do seem to be making a very nice area for neighborhood cats to go for a crap. So if you're after polythene, uh, stay away from the 100 micron stuff from Bunnings. 
it's absolutely terrible. Uh, if you look at it the wrong way, I fear that it will end up with a hole in it. So in summary, it's very exciting that the pumpkin growing season's almost upon us. I'm probably gonna have to be dealing with cats and it's time to remove the polythene. So it's time to remove that crappy polythene, um, the super thin, nasty stuff that I got from Bunnings, which I do not recommend. Anyway, you're gonna do that, and then we're going to, uh, well I am, I'm gonna pull out all these pegs, go around and try and get every single one so it doesn't cause me problems later with the lawnmower. Uh, let's see how that goes. One thing I didn't think about was um, this polythene may have provided a really good spot for the uh, ants. Uh, as you know, I've got an ant problem, so check this out. Ants everywhere. Exciting. So as you can see, there is an area sort of defined this could probably be a bit more dead. I think there was a problem with that weed killer, which I did explain in the previous video or blog. I can't remember one of the two, but anyway, that's all good. But my main concern right now was just to get some more stuff into the transplant site for the giant pumpkin. When you're growing in a small area, you don't have to do everything at once. It'd be nice if you did, but in reality, I don't need to worry about watering right now because there's nothing in here. I can get water from the house to here if I need to, that's not a problem. Later on I'll sort out a better watering solution. For now I'm going to get some biochar product in that hole and I've got some insect frass from Insect Direct left over from last season. I probably really do need to pick up some compost or something else. I've got some liquid humic uh, builder so I'll probably work on that as well but for now I'm going to dig up that little pit, add those goodies to it. Hopefully it helps break it down. It does look pretty rich and obviously that is the number one spot of where the cat wants to poo. Of course I've upset the ants. There's a million in here. We'll see how that goes. plenty heaps of tree roots left over. This is a start. Um, yeah, more compost probably. I'm probably gonna have to do ant bait out here. I hope if you're growing anywhere this year that you're excited, you've got your pumpkin patch almost sorted. Uh, let me know what you're up to. So as you can see, it almost looks like I'm probably gonna have to be dealing with ants as well, mainly just from a pain in the ass point of view. They, I don't think they do too much damage to the plant or anything like that. I could be wrong, let me know. These are just normal general ants, they don't seem to do anything apart from be everywhere, uh, trying to find food. So I don't know how much nutrients they'll steal from the pumpkin plant, but I'm going to be putting bait down around outside to control them. I've already got a post talking about how I dealt with ants in the past and the product and the containers that I use to uh, put it all around the place. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Once again, thank you to all the subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, head over to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell, and you'll be notified when new videos come out. So until next time, uh, I'm Sam from giantpumpkins.co.nz.